Hi and welcome back to my workshop. I'm John. This is a General Electric 477. I've already remo removed one of the coils and um, I'm preparing to remove the second coil because we're going to replace the capacitors in these IF coils today. Uh, so on this particular model we need to undo a screw that holds the coil in. And these coils have lugs on the bottom which fit into a um, socket so they're pretty easy to pull out however one lug on each one of these IFs is connected to a wire so we have to unsolder that particular wire first and then uh, you can see the socket once we get this wire unsoldered we can just pull that whole IF tube right out of that socket The uh, shield, the aluminum metal shield that's over this coil is held on by these two little metal tabs on the bottom. So we're just going to pry those up and uh, get those out of the way so that we can take the coil out of the base and the coil. You can see the green base there. It comes right out. So, um, And there's a two winding coil that we have. I'll uh, give you a better view of this. Um, on this side, uh, from this angle, I don't know if you can see, but on the base, the very top of this base right here is a clear plastic cover that's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. But just take a closer look at what uh, the actual how the actual capacitor is built into the system. Uh, as you can see here, there's four lugs, and I've got drawn here pretty crudely. Each lug has an arm that goes across it. Uh, one lug has the bottom arm, one lug has the top arm. That um, sheet of capacitors, there's actually two capacitors on there, there's a foil capacitor, is going to go in between the top and bottom lug of both of those um, pairs of lugs there. And it will fit in there just like that. And to hold it all down, uh, contact has to be made on those little arms on the bottom and top of that piece of foil. So to hold it down and push those all together is the plastic cap or the plastic cover that fits across the top. And so you can see that the plastic cover fits over the top of the mica um, capacitors which are in between those arms. Uh, it pushes everything together and the arms make contact both on top and bottom of the mica foil sheet. Here is a side view picture of the base and lugs on one side of the uh, IF coil. You can see that the lugs are held in by the leg clamps on either side. When we make our cut, make sure you don't cut into those because we want those lugs to be held in place securely. The lugs that we want to cut are labeled as plastic clamps. Those come up on the side and go over the top of that plastic clear class plastic cover. So we're going to we're going to cut that we're going to cut those two little things right there at the seam where they meet at the plastic cover. And you can tell by the yellow and black striped area here, this is where we need to make our cut. This will free up um, those clamps that are holding that plastic down. And we're, I'm just, we're just going to use a Dremel tool. We're going to cut in there. Again, we want to make sure we don't cut into the leg clamps. We want those uh, lugs to be held in securely. And sometimes the uh, Dremel will get out, of, get away from you. It's real easy to get up there, and if it does, it'll cut right through one of those wires. So be careful about those uh, really thin wires and your Dremel tool. Okay, now um, all you need to do is just use a small screwdriver or something to go ahead and uh, break that off. 
once you get both sides you can get the plastic up we don't need that plastic cover so you can see what I'm doing here is using my clippers to just cut that plastic cover out of there it's once we remove the mica caps it's going to be useless so we don't need it go ahead and cut it get it out of your way uh, so it doesn't harm your uh, connections or your wires so and then um, we end up with a coil without a piece of plastic without the plastic cover on it basically okay and here's a good view of the top of the um, base I've got the plastic cover removed and you can see the little arms from the lugs that go across that uh, silver piece of foil in there um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to bend those up a little bit and I'm going to remove that foil and I want to take a closer look at it okay so now you can see that I've got the uh, foil capacitor removed although it did come out in two pieces I've got it sitting on the white piece of paper and we're going to take a close up of it here in just a second to see what kind of damage we've got. Um, if you look closely you can see there's all kind of marring and scarring on this thing. It, that's supposed to just be a plain silver background. What's interesting here are those bright green, red, and blue spark marks on the sides there. That's where the electricity has been arcing across from one capacitor to another and the reason why this particular radio was crashing at, at high voltages but not at low voltages because at low voltages there wasn't enough uh, amperage to cross that gap so that is definitely uh, SMD here I'm pretty certain of this this little foil capacitor is very indicative of that particular problem <clears throat> so I'm glad that we uh, we got this out of there and so we got the mica caps out now the only thing that remains here with the base is to clip off these arms so that the two sides won't be touching each other we don't want uh, the two sides to touch each other so one of, at least one of these uh, arms going across the two lugs has to be removed or you can remove both of them just to make sure that there's not a short between both sides of the wire now it's time to change capacitors I've got some 100, uh, 130 picofarads to put in there and I didn't do it on tape but uh, here you can see that I did put the one capacitor across each winding soldered it into place uh, the next thing I want to do is make sure I've, I've got continuity because anytime that you get these lugs hot with that little tiny wire on there you want to make sure that you didn't unsolder that wire uh, so um, I check each winding to make sure it's continuous uh, and I want to also make sure that the lugs aren't bent out because when I put the metal cover back over them uh, I don't want those lugs touching metal cover that will short them out as well so that could be a problem okay so I put the uh, coil back into the can and um, I'm going to bend those uh, little metal tabs back over to hold it down in there as you can see this is our this is the uh, second IF can and if you notice I've got the uh, coil in there upside down the one lug that had the wire attached to it is supposed to be on the bottom side so I'm going to notice that here in a minute <laughs> I haven't yet I'm actually going to put it back together and then I'm going to take it back apart there we go putting it back in the right way now I'm going to um, press the metal tabs down and check for uh, any shorts between each lug and the metal shielding itself and once I'm absolutely positive that there's no short between that I'm going to insert it back into the radio Okay, so um, I went through the entire alignment procedure. Um, I'll go over that real quick. I think your radio is probably going to be about the same. So the instructions tell you to, to inject your signal at 455 kilocycles to uh, T2 and T3. That's your first and second IF. And um, 
Then you're going to jump over to capacitor 1D with 1620 kilocycles. And on this radio, that is the white wire hooked up to the left gang of the um, tuning capacitor. And uh, your tuning capacitor should be fully open when you do that. You'll hear the signal at fully open. And then your next step is to uh, inject a 1500 KC on the yellow wire. And when you hook that up, just rock your uh, tuning capacitor a little bit until you hear the signal. What I did was I just disengaged the antenna so I wouldn't pick up any radio stations and just turn the tuning capacitor until you hear that 1500 kilocycle and then adjust both of your um, IF cans. And that's the alignment procedure for um, this radio. It's working great. Um, you can see the uh, the uh, lamp indicator is bright, uh, indicating that there's no longer a short in the radio. Are like his normal passes, not necessarily on target. So there we go. But that's a good call. From uh, we well have a completely fixed radio, and I want to thank everyone on antiqueradios.com forums for helping me with this thing. I, don't think it's gonna happen. I have I, learned I a great deal about radio repair here working on this beautiful little radio, and um, uh, hey everyone. Uh, I really owe a lot of thanks to you guys who helped me, so kudos to you. Thank you very kindly. I hope that I can return the favor someday. someday. Um, the only thing that uh, remains for me on this radio is the case now. Um, I've got this case that came in seven pieces. And you can see some of the body work I've done to it already. I need to sand that down with like 2,000 grit sandpaper now. Um, the person who mailed this to me did not package it properly. Uh, so what I'm thinking that I want to do on this one is to, because the front looks pretty good. Uh, it's a musophonic, like I, I think yours is a musophonic. Uh, everything looks good here. I just need to clean the front. I'm going to tape that off and I'm just going to tape, I'm just going to paint the uh, three top sides um, of this radio to bring it back to life. And that's it for me. Guys, thank you very kindly. This radio is now repaired. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure um, uh, talking with you guys and, and getting your help and assistance. I've had a lot of fun with this. Thank you again, and uh, have a great day. Thanks. This is John signing out.